how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. How's the baby? How's the baby? <laughs> that's what I. That's what I wanted. Uh, how old is he? How old is yours? He turned one in May. Okay. Yeah. Yours was. Ours was I'm May. It was the same. Yeah, May same. 9th. So it was May 10th for. Yeah, yeah we were like yeah, that's right, right back to back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's funny. Um. Yeah. He's doing good. He's outside playing right now and. And the kids are not very happy about having to watch him, but oh well, that's what they have to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I sent Ryan outside to play with him in the water table. <laughs> oh. It's hot here. Oh, is it? It's like actually really cool here today. Yeah, it's like, nice today. It's like weird because it's always like so hot and humid on the fourth weekend usually, and today is so nice. So, um, yeah, it was in the 60s this morning here. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you got me wondering what is the temperature because it felt hot. We went to the farmer's market this morning to buy some stuff for the holiday. Yeah. It's only 80? Oh, it felt warmer. <laughs> yeah. That's not that. That's actually pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're the same way. If your kids come in, don't worry about it. Like we're, I mean, we have I don't know if you've seen anything that I've posted recently, but we have a farm store now and it's like, you know, open to the public all day. So we have a driveway alarm that beeps whenever mm. someone drives up and then our oldest is out there helping actually some customers just pulled up. So she's out there helping them right now. But um, anyway, how old is your oldest? She's 11. She just turned 11. And she's able to help with the oh, store. Yeah. That's nice. Super helpful. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> she is. That's really nice yeah so um so anyways we'll just roll with it and whatever happens you know whatever yeah. but uh, <laughs> it's life um so i'm just going to introduce the podcast and then i'm gonna let you introduce yourself first and then we'll get into all the goat stuff so um but okay so welcome back to the heart at home podcast uh as promised, we have started going through some, or we are going to start going through some of the homestead animals that you might want to add when you are um, thinking of, I mean, some of our listeners don't even um, have animals yet or a homestead. So I know planning ahead, people want to know what animal should I get first? We get that question all yeah, the time. Like what animal should I get first? Mm -hmm. And um so it's kind of funny because the first animal we got was what? Besides chickens, like every, I think everyone has chickens pretty much. Yeah, but was, well, we got those two goats for the kids. We got goats, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so today we have um, my friend Rose from Wholesome Roots on here, and um, she's just going to kind of give us the lowdown on the homestead goat. So, mm -hmm. um, Rose, do you want to kind of introduce yourself a little bit and tell us, you know, what you do and how, maybe how me and you even came to know each other, so. Okay, I'm Rose <laughs> from Wholesome Roots, like she says, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we have a homestead in Georgia, and we've been homesteading for as I've always homesteaded basically like to a certain degree you know even when I lived in an apartment in Arizona I had a little patio garden and I canned stuff I went to the farmer's market and you know so I count that myself as homesteading I grew up in a homesteading family so we had goats growing up and that was something that I always knew I wanted to get back to and have goats someday and every time I would move and I moved a lot <laughs> until we got here. And I always said I wanted a place where I could have goats. And that was always my goal is to have goats one day and be able to raise my kids with goat milk like I was growing up with. So here I am with five kids, two are grown ups, um, three little ones ranging from nine, six and one year old. <laughs> so yeah. they they love their goats and they really enjoy growing up with the homesteading lifestyle and we recently purchased our own place finally we had been renting and our last homestead we had goats but we were renting so we were set with a lot of limitations that made it difficult to set up infrastructure and fencing and such mm -hmm. so it was really nice to move here in the fall and be able to truly like buckle down like what are we going to do as a permanent setup mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. been really nice 
to do that. And since then we've added a couple of cows and some pigs. Wow. Okay. So, That's awesome. I didn't realize yeah. that, that you yeah. added some other, some other big animals are as they, well. Are they dairy cows? Are the cows, uh, are the cows dairy cows? They are a dual purpose. They're a heritage breed called Piney Wood Cattle. Okay. And um, they're, they are designed, they, they come from the Southern Florida yeah. breeds and they, they're designed to eat pasture, not just pasture, but like brush. They are yeah. like a goat. They, wow. consume, they consume food more like a goat does than most cattle. So they're really <laughs> easy for us to keep. We have a forested area that has fence that goes around the outside of it that they're able to go in and eat brush and it's amazing because they really do eat like goats wow. and they eat all the green briar and all the you know the weed type vegetation on mm -hmm. the bottom layer is getting cleaned up by them and and it's it's just really neat to watch them but we hope to they're dual, pur dual purpose so we hope to milk them we have a mama and her baby and we hope think maybe mama is bred we haven't had her vet checked or blood checked, but um, she was with a, a bull the entire time since she calved um, until the calf was five months old when we got them in at Christmas time. Yeah. So yeah. she she could be calving right now or anywhere to probably the middle of October at the latest. Yeah. So we'll just, she, I have not seen any heat cycles, so we'll yeah. see. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. They, they, they get along really good with the goats. Um, at first, we kept them together, and we would rotate them out of the goat pasture during the day and then back in with the goats at night. Uh, and now we are at the point where they stay out all the time, and the goats are separate. But it, ideally, we want to do a rotational grazing where we run the goats and then the cows and then the pigs. Yeah. And and get everything so that everybody gets the right stage of growth of food in the pasture for them. Yeah. And to improve the health of the pasture too. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about how you uh, contain those goats when you're renting, if you didn't have a permanent setup. <laughs> was that so exciting we, or? <laughs> we, we, we had a barn that was there already. So. <laughs> I have, a, I have a parrot that wants to be interviewed. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's so funny. I covered him with his blanket so he would <laughs> talk, but that, funny. that doesn't always work. Uh, so yeah, we had Premier One electric net fencing, okay. and we moved, we moved them around. There was a pasture there, but it wasn't fenced in properly for goats. It had just barbed wire, um, which is very dangerous and not good for goats right. at all. Um, so we had to keep them away from that fence, actually. So we used right. the Premier One electric net fencing, and it worked really well. Um, there were a couple of summers where the drought made it so that it didn't ground properly, and they would escape a couple of times. And a couple of our crossbreeds, we had we have mainly Nubian goats, which are a large breed mm -hmm. dairy goat, and the Alpine mixes that we had, and the um, the ones that had a little bit of Nigerian dwarf in them, Nigerian dwarfs can jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and those ones ended up being the trickier ones to keep inside, but our Nubians were pretty good about it unless the other ones got out and then they would find a way to join them. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily yeah. they did have that extra barrier of the barbed wire, which wasn't really like a barrier that would keep them in, but it was like a diversion until I realized they were out and got them right. put back up. Right. Being a stay-at-home mom and, and homeschooling meant that I was home all the time. So it wasn't a severe situation when they did get out because mm -hmm. I was able to just go, oh, goats are out, you know, and, and put them back up. We did lose a few gardens <laughs> at times, but it yeah. was, <laughs> yeah. it, it worked out. most of the time, the premier one was perfect and worked excellent. And we were able to move it to new sections. So we were able to do the rotational grazing and we really improved the pasture while we lived there because they had pretty much killed the pasture from the previous tenants. They had horses and they ended up getting to the point where they had too many horses for the pasture. And then they got to the point where they weren't taking care of their horses anymore and not even feeding them. 
Wow. And so those horses ended up turning the entire property into just red clay soil. Wow. They, they, had, they had eaten, there was no grass left. And so our rotational grazing really improved the health of that pasture. And we actually left it in a really good condition for any animal. Wow. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. So um, what kinds of goats do you have now? Like, and how many goats do you, <laughs> do you have so many that you don't know how many you have? Like, like we have chickens. Actually, funny enough, just the other day, I was walking around and giving a farm tour for our new farm sitter. When, mm -hmm. when we moved, we had to give up our farm sitter and find a new one. So we were um, touring her around to see all the animals. And she asked how many goats I had. And I was like, <laughs> 10. And Ryan was like, uh, I count 16 right here. <laughs> so what we yeah. did is we had 30 at the previous property. We had okay. 30. Goats. And because we knew we were moving, even though we hadn't um, shared that with everybody publicly, but we knew from the spring on that we were going to be moving. We were trying to find a place for six mm -hmm. months because, mm -hmm. you know, when you're shopping for the homestead, you got to be particular about everything that you want and the things that you have to have on the property. So yeah. it was a, it was a very careful choice and, and we were in a much lower income bracket and price range than most homestead sell for. So we were looking at like the cheaper end and so a lot of those don't come on the market very often <laughs> yeah so we had to be very quick and um yeah so we had 30 then and i decreased and decreased and decreased till we had 10 for the move i didn't want to move a lot of goats mm -hmm. and i didn't even know if i would be able to get um the proper transportation for a lot of goats i mm -hmm. i was under the impression that i may have to do it in a two-horse trailer that my friend was going to loan us so I didn't want to have too many that we couldn't move. Mm -hmm. So we decreased to 10, but with kidding and everything, we, we have up to 16 now. <laughs> okay. All right. And are they mostly Nubians or what, what kind do you have? We have mostly Nubians. We kept our one purebred um, Alpine. Her mm -hmm. name is Kitty. Mm -hmm. And she had a baby that is a Nubian Alpine mix, which we call Nupine. Mm -hmm. And her name is Truly, and we kept her. And she kitted for the first time this spring, and she had a little buckling. So the buckling is three quarters Nubian, because <laughs> our buck is a Nubian. Yeah. Um, but we won't be keeping him. I'm okay. not sure what his destination is <laughs> quite yet, because I have a hard time with... Mm -hmm sending my goats to freezer camp yeah. I have not done that yet mm. but it is something that I always thought I would do because yeah. I do enjoy the flavor of goat meat I like goat meat I like the idea of raising my own red meat but I've always been so tender-hearted that I'd rather sell it to somebody else to let them do it uh -huh. <laughs> I understand. so in the past we've been able to sell all bucklings to other people who I don't want to know what you're doing you're right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you do whatever you need to do yeah. not opposed to the idea it's just been it's more of a I'm a sensitive soul and I don't yeah. I don't know I, I grow very fond of my animals so right yeah I, we have mostly sheep now um and Adam I mean he I think he really enjoys the sheep mm -hmm. a lot and so we're not milking sheep or anything like that so I know you have a even closer bond with yours but it's hard for us to harvest our our sheep mm -hmm. it's hard for him to yeah. to do that just because you do get kind of like you just get real fond of them so yeah mm -hmm. you guys send them off or do you do it at home he does we it do here. it here yeah I think that's I think that's the hard part it's like <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of the hard part for me is I want to be able to do it here I don't want to mm -hmm. have to send them off you know I know a lot of uh People say that the adrenaline that they produce when you're transporting them in a trailer and going through this scary place can actually alter the flavor okay. and make it not as flavorable. So that's one of the reasons. And plus, I don't want the last moment to be a stressful moment. I want it to be a pleasant yeah. moment like it is with our poultry that we process. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't yeah. want them to be scared. I want, I want it to be, I had an awesome life and then, right. whoop, you know, that's it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, We agree. Yeah. Um, so if, 
you were a brand new homesteader um, and you wanted to add animals to your homestead, would you suggest that, you know, knowing your experience with goats, is that a good first animal to put on the homestead? What do you Be think? Besides poultry, do you mean four-legged livestock or? We've had people. I would just start with poultry. I would definitely okay. start with poultry. Yeah. Goats that's that's usually what we tell people too so yeah goats can be a real handful um you know we when our numbers got up high and 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 we we had so many we were unfortunately or fortunate depending on how you look at it mm -hmm. enough to see pretty much every problem you can encounter mm -hmm. uh, so it was fortunate because it was a learning lesson we learned so much more by having the problems come up that did come up mm -hmm. and be able to work through them and figure out the solutions mm -hmm. yeah. but in the same breath it was really unfortunate because you know we we suffered some losses and, mm -hmm. and it was it was hard and i feel like now that we're down in numbers i feel like it's much easier so i guess i would say stick with three goats for a couple of years okay and, and yeah. see how much you love it or not <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because you know I, I kind of jumped in and went all in the first year I went from I got two goats and I was just going to stick with those two goats and then I added two more and then I added four more and then I you know and then I added five more and that was all in the first year yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. like, so and then they all had babies so it was mm -hmm. like yeah. and we got four more and then we <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah that, that's a lot and that's kind of our experience too was with our goats and sheep those are the first like livestock that we got mm -hmm. and it was like we had no we didn't know what we were doing we had no idea how like how bad the um parasites would be and like I mean, I think that's, that was the hardest yeah. lesson we mm -hmm. learned with yep. livestock was just like, especially during the summertime, especially when it's wet, like you keep them moving, keep them moving or, you know, they're going to get down. So, yeah. and, and we're like, um, I think you share in the same ideal about like, um, you know, trying to do things naturally and um, more preventative stuff naturally instead of like having to treat the problem with something, you know some chemicals Absolutely. but but um i mean i know some certain times call for things but it's really tough because you really have to stay on top of it mm -hmm. yeah it is hard yeah you really do i mean we you know when we keep up with the proper feed the proper minerals the proper copper um especially it's, it's very beneficial for goats to keep the proper copper level up because that helps fight parasites. Mm -hmm. And once we figured that out in the herbs, we would use prevent, we use preventative herbs in their food and stuff and just making sure that they stay healthy and strong to begin with. Mm -hmm. And like you said, moving them, rotating them from one spot to another, especially if it's been wet. And, and so using preventative measures is, is, is really much easier than trying to treat a problem when you already have it um and even with preventative measures you're gonna have certain goats that are more prone to parasites mm -hmm. in yeah. your herd no matter what they say that 20 percent of your herd is the one that carries your parasite load mm -hmm. so you you could end up with you know if you have 10 goats eight of them that never have parasite issues but two of them that are constantly having and you have to make the hard decision that those are coals and yeah. by culling, I don't necessarily mean that they have to be put down or go to freezer camp, but they they need to be in a different situation. If you're trying to get a, a natural herb raised herd without using a lot of uh, chemicals, you, you really have to be careful about, okay, I'm not keeping any does from that one because mm -hmm. that one always has parasites. Yeah. And, and, and so that was something that we worked on for a good five years before we finally felt like we had weeded out the, the worst of them mm -hmm. and got to the point where we felt like, okay, we have the stronger genetics now. And I honestly am not terrified, <laughs> but I am very hesitant to purchase any goats outside of my herd because 
those were the only times that I had really serious parasite issues was when I purchased outside of the herd. Mm -hmm. And a big part of that is because the majority of my herd came from an all natural herd. And we started out with our first four goats were completely all natural from that herd. And then, um, we added in two other goats that were from a not natural herd and they were pretty strong and good genetics because they came originally from that natural herd. They were offspring, but the person who purchased them had never raised them with natural stuff. Okay. So they had, they, they were borderline good with it and borderline not. Mm -hmm. And the ones that we purchased from chemically raised herds, they didn't do well with us with the herb program at all yeah. they were constantly getting parasites mm -hmm. and it got to the point where at that point in our um goat journey we decided to start using treatments with chemical treatments when the herbs didn't work mm -hmm. and that was that was a really hard pill for me to swallow because i honestly didn't think i would ever have to yeah. I thought I could ride through without ever using chemicals and everything would go smoothly. Mm -hmm. But adding in outside animals made me see that a, a, when a goat hasn't been raised that way and the herd wasn't managed that way, mm -hmm. then they never weeded out the ones that were parasite problems mm -hmm. because they were constantly treating parasites with chemicals. Yeah. So they were reliant on those chemicals. Right. And, and those ones were the ones that that we had to just say we couldn't do those anymore so now we're back down to the bare bones of the genetics from the original herd mm -hmm. and they're the best they, they they i mean we do have parasite blooms um especially after kidding in the spring we do see a significant increase in parasites in our goats and we have to be really careful and watch them closely and we up our herb dosages and we up all of our natural treatments but if it's not working and I'm seeing pale eyelids, I go and get the chemical treatment mm -hmm. and I give it to them. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I, I, I can't watch an animal suffer. Yeah. And if, if the herbs aren't working, if it got to the point where it's that bad, then I have to, I, you know, as, as my, my conscience wouldn't allow me to just keep treating with herbs and watch the animal slowly die. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's yeah. not working, it's not working. You got to do something different. Right. Yeah. I think, I mean, we pretty much share that mm -hmm. philosophy as well. Cause, um, with our, with our sheep, us, that's what we've experienced buying sheep outside of our herd. Mm -hmm. Cause we had, we do the same thing. Like we, we don't keep the ones that are, prone to parasites and, and just sickly animals. Like we don't keep those. And, um, and we've just been trying to breed the ones that are, they're real strong and, mm -hmm. and do well with natural things. So, um, but yeah, that's tough. That's a tough lesson to learn for sure. Cause it's hard because most, most of the time you're on a budget and you can't just go spend top dollar for what you're looking for a lot of times mm, or most yeah. people can't. So it makes it really tough. Yeah. Well, it, you know, what I found is there's nobody left now in my area that has a herd that's naturally managed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, you can't find. Yeah. I that's mean, how it is here as well. And, and, and originally when I first started, there were a couple of herds and they've all kind of got out of the business and just don't even have goats anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, who am I supposed to buy my next buck from? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping one of our, we have one, one buckling out there that I'm, I'm hoping will be a new herd sire for us in the future, but we'll see, you know, if he develops well, if he doesn't come down with any parasite issues, because <laughs> yeah. I won't keep, I won't keep a buck if it's not a strong parasite. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Because that, that buck is going to be your most important tool in managing your herd because they're right. going to breed all of your future lines. Yeah, right. That's right. So, right. That's true. Um, okay. So we've talked, we talked some about the cons of keeping, keeping goats. Just, I mean, if you can call that a con, that's just something you have to be aware of is the parasite wow. load and all that stuff. But what, what would you say, what's your favorite thing about keeping goats and like what, why, I know you said the milk, is that the main thing that, that got you interested in keeping goats? I think the milk was the main reason why I wanted to originally, but you know, I was a kid when we had goats and I don't remember them being 
such friendly animals. <laughs> My goats are so friendly. They're like puppy dogs. They have each of them have an individual personality. Mm -hmm. Like I cannot be any more in love with any animal than my goats because they, they speak to you. They, they really do. Like they know when I'm down, they know when I'm not feeling good. They know when I'm happy, they act playful. When I, when I'm in a good playful mood, they'll act playful with me. When I'm down, they'll come and nudge me, you know, like it's, they are such amazing creatures. They really feel what you feel and they, they all have such different personalities mm -hmm. and I love them. Like, and I love the babies. I mean, come on, who doesn't love oh, a baby? I know. Baby mm -hmm. are adorable. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm really into the whole birthing thing. Like I love to be there when they give birth. Mm -hmm. I I really think I missed my calling. I should have been a doula <laughs> because I love being a goat doula. I just adore it. It's just being with them in that moment and walking them through it and petting them. They come up to me and they want to be petted and they're like, mama, are you here with me? Stay with me. Don't leave. You know? And I'm just like, it's okay, baby. I'm here. You know? I don't know. I think there's, there's something to be said for, feeling like an animal truly wants you there in such a sensitive precarious time it makes you feel really special yeah. you know mm -hmm. they make me feel special because of how they love me yeah yeah that's sweet yeah that's cool yeah yeah i never like well we've only had a, just a handful of goats and and to be quite honest they're adam's least favorite animal <laughs> um, <laughs> because they they tend to be the ones that you know breach the fence um you know cause everyone else to breach the fence yeah. and you know that kind of thing just kind of cause the chaos on the farm is usually what the goat's job is mm -hmm. around here <laughs> so, that's just hard because we've only yeah, had, i tell you one it's, it's hard because we've only had a couple goats with other animals and so it's if we had all goats it would be different right but, um I tell you, once you get that fence thing figured out, though, and they don't get out anymore, yeah, it's your bliss. I mean, this place here, we don't have that issue at all. Yeah. We have a hard fence here, mm -hmm. and no premier ones. There's no, there's nowhere where they can knock down a fence post, you know, right. it's, and it's all solid fence. And we, we don't have them. We had them get out the first. Um, I think it was the first two weeks we were here. We had it set up where the premier one fence went all the way around the exterior fence. There's an exterior fence here that's barbed wire, like mm -hmm. it was at the old place. And so we leave our cattle in that section and we had run our premier fence that we weren't using anymore along that barbed wire so that we could let the goats out into the bigger area too. Yeah. Supervise. Well, <laughs> not supervised enough. Apparently working in the vegetable garden where I can't see them anymore is, uh, is, is dangerous because they got out, went into the neighbor's yard and they got into some azalea or rhododendron. I'm not sure which, but I had poisoning on my hands. Oh, you know, no. they were toxic plants. And I had two or three of them that were puking green and I had to like hurry up and get the charcoal in them to absorb the toxins. And like, it was so scary. But I, once I realized that they were where they were getting under, they were just, you know, the premier one fence wasn't plugged in. It was yeah. just against the barbed wire as a visual physical barrier type thing but they, they knew how to get out of that. <laughs> yeah. So once, once I figured out that they could do that, we kept them in the hard fenced area and we haven't had a problem. And we're in the process of running hard wire all along that barbed wire. Mm. So we've got another paddock that we have half built right now. And that's going to be another goat paddock so that we can switch them out um, in that area. And then we're going to run along the barbed wire all the way around the perimeter with goat quality fence so that if we ever did need like if it was a drought and their area was completely dried up and there was no more vegetation we'd have to let them out into the woods even though i don't want the goats to like ruin my trees in the woods and stuff because yeah. <laughs> they'll eat the bark if they have to yeah. so i don't want to keep them over there but 
once we get that goat fence all along the barbed wire fence, we'll have that as an option if we need it. Do you, have, just, do you have one favorite is, goat? Do you have one oh, one favorite goat? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I could pick a favorite. I love them all. Pick your so favorite much. child. <laughs> yeah, I love them all. It's yeah. it's hard to pick favorites. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> do you have a favorite goat or sheep? <laughs> Um, yeah, I have in the past. I don't know if I currently do, but yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of sheep. We have about 40 head. And so it's, oh, it's wow. becoming hard to keep up with them. <laughs> yeah. 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 I have a favorite cow. Yeah. I think. Well, <laughs> which one's your favorite? Probably, I guess Betty. Betty. Yeah. She's been with us the longest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, what kind of cow do you have? She's a Jersey Dexter mix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she produces as much or more than our jersey does. Oh, wow. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of like milking <laughs> cows and animals, um, I know you're just getting into the cows as well, but um, if like if someone does, like they're just interesting goats, because that's so funny to me that. That's like usually the first animal people talk about getting mm -hmm. on if besides chickens, you know, um, we've had some friends who didn't even have chickens yet. And they're like, I'm thinking about getting a goat, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, um, so, I mean, would you suggest someone just starting out to just get like, like what breed of goat would you suggest? Like a boar goat or something, something that's just going to clean up the yard? Or would you suggest like a dairy goat for, for a newbie? I think, no matter how new you are, you should start out with what you intend to have. Mm -hmm. um, if you want a dairy goat, you should get a dairy goat. Mm -hmm. If you want a dairy goat that has higher cream for making lots of cheeses and stuff, then you should get a Nigerian dwarf. If you want one that's got higher yield and still a lot of cream, you should get a Nubian. Mm -hmm. I personally highly recommend Nubians. I think that their personalities um, and their beauty are far superior to any other breed <laughs> so i just but that's me personally and it is the breed i grew up with so it probably has a lot to do with with my opinion yeah but i have a hard time keeping nigerian dwarfs in fences and i i i actually if somebody said as a new person who's afraid of what i might encounter would you choose nigerian dwarf or nubian I think even if Nubian wasn't my favorite, I would say Nubian because Nigerian dwarfs jumping ability, their ability to get out is so much higher yeah. than the Nubian that I just, I would not want that nightmare on a new person's hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I bet most people get those because they're smaller. Because they're smaller. I think it's going to be easier yeah. because they're smaller, but they can jump way higher than a Nubian. <laughs> yeah. Makes yeah. them too heavy to jump a four foot fence, but yeah. a, Nigerian dwarf can jump a four foot fence and then some. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, with no problem. <laughs> it's like, yeah. did you have springs in your legs? <laughs> yeah, that's unreal. We've never had Niger Nigerian dwarfs. We've had alpines and Nubians. Mm -hmm. And the alpines are good jumpers, too, compared to my Nubians, I've noticed. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, it's it's definitely, it's interesting to see the, the breed difference. But Nubian have very high... Uh, milk fat they're the next highest milk fat other than nigerian and they have a very high yield so if you want a lot of volume in your milk then nubian is a better choice than a nigerian as well okay. so i don't know it's <laughs> it's hard to say but if you want if you just wanted a goat for practice mm -hmm. for like clearing i would say just get a weather mm -hmm. um okay. you know, which is a boy so then you don't have to worry about the complications of birth and, and milking and all of the other, when you start breeding animals and, and having babies being born, that opens up a whole level of experience level that mm -hmm. is much harder to attain mm -hmm. with just reading through it in books yeah. and, and watching videos about it. You have to learn it hands on. It's mm -hmm. something that you just don't fully grasp. I can remember the first time I had a goat in labor that needed assistance. Mm. And I had to go in 
And I was so scared. I had read every single book there is about goats. I had read every single blog post. I've watched every single video. I knew exactly what I should do. I knew how to do it. I knew when to do it. But the actually doing it mm -hmm. was so much more. It was yeah. just mind blowing and to actually follow through and get my hands dirty literally mm -hmm. and 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 physically have to readjust because she had two bucklings coming out at the same time oh, my they both had noses in the birth canal mm -hmm. and one had to be pushed back right and the other had to be pulled for i mean it was whoo that was a yeah, journey intense, but yeah. Once I did it, it was like, I felt like so much more accomplished that it was something I could do again, you mm -hmm. know, and, and before doing it, I was really nervous, but I felt like I had read enough. I had watched enough. I had learned enough that if it came to it, I would be able to. Mm -hmm. And luckily, because I had done all the research way before I was faced with the problem, I was able to help that animal and do the right thing. And, and it was a successful birth, mm -hmm. but it was pretty scary there for a moment, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think research is research, 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 research. You can never research enough, especially about goats because vets, no matter where you live in the country, from what I've seen in the Facebook groups that I belong in with goats as the topic it doesn't matter where you live. There are very few goats, goat vets, mm -hmm. vets that truly know and understand the, the, the difference in goats from other animals. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just a drastic, mm -hmm. you can have a vet that was great livestock vet with horses and cows, and they will do the wrong thing with a goat every day of the week. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's scary because they are who you want to trust because they have a degree. Right, right. But it doesn't make them smarter than a goat farmer who's experienced it yes. at all. And, yeah. and I, that's the, that's where I, you know, it's, I've had to take my goats to the vet for emergency situations. And I was lucky that I have Auburn University. So if you do end up needing goat vet care and it's an emergency situation, I highly recommend you check out your um, land grant university that has a livestock operation at the university mm -hmm. because they're going to have way more experience with goats than than if you just go to your local vet or your local even even if it's an equine or cattle vet they're not going to have that experience okay well, that's that's some good advice um yeah i guess for us in north carolina it would probably be north carolina state they they do a lot of um livestock agricultural work there so um, but speaking of research, like where do you have like favorite books that you've read about goats and goat care or do you, I mean, certain, I mean, I know your YouTube channel is very knowledgeable. We've looked up stuff on your YouTube channel for us to use as well. But, um, you know, how have you done the most research? Well, I think probably the best experience for me personally was um having a hands-on mentor mm -hmm. um somebody who has who was nearby who was in goats who was able to i was able to go to their farm during the time that i didn't have goats you know and and watch her with her goats and 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 ask all the questions about what she was doing and why and and she was a great mentor and um and then after that of course, I think diversity of your research, not just any one book, but read three different books about the same topic and gather the information that seems to be the closest fit to the correct answer. Because you can ask 10 different goat experts the same question and get 10 different answers. Right, right. So I think it's important that you look at it on an individual case by case situation and um, doing the research in a variety of areas. Um, I highly recommend the Facebook group, um, Successful Goating with Rosie. Um, Rosie Ramsey has had goats for over 20 years. I don't, I, I think it's longer than that, but she, she is a very um, educated herds woman. Mm -hmm. She does not just follow 
what the vet said to do or what this book said to do, but she does the, she does the research to find out the answers of why and how, not just because somebody told me, but mm -hmm. understanding the why and the how and the science behind the answer is far more important than the answer. Right. Right. So, and I did go through a course with, um, the, uh, Georgia Organics and the University of Florida um, did a small ruminant production course. Mm -hmm. And I did go through that to get my um, journeyman farmer certification in small ruminant production. And that was very helpful as well. And that was mm -hmm. university based information. I, I feel like the university based information is some of the best. Um, there's a website to what is that one? that if you're looking up specific ailments, you can find out a lot of information about them. Uh, Tennessee meat goats, okay. onion Creek farm. Is that ringing a bell for you? I don't know. Um, that one's, so those are, so Rosie's group and that one, they don't have natural recommendations. They have more um, of the scientific approaches. So then for me wanting to be more natural, then I go to, the natural goat care groups and I read books from Pat Colby um, and other well-known um, herbalists. Um, herbalists are, are a good source of information. Um, Amy Fuel has a great book um, for homesteading that has a lot of information about um, just basic starting off points for herbal, herbal use with your homestead. Mm -hmm. And there's just a wealth of information out there. And I just, I think the diversity of it all, learning a little bit from everyone and taking what information you can from each of those people is going to help you the most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's a good point. Um, do you have any more questions for her? I know you had to leave for a second. I don't think so. Um, do you have anything else that you uh, want to say before you let us know how people can, um, you know, get in touch with you or follow you guys? <laughs> Did you talk about what do you do with the milk, like milk processing? Or no, we didn't talk about milk. I guess processing. you make soap and stuff and cheese and things. Yeah, what do you what do you like to do with your milk? Do y'all drink it all? What do you what do you do? When we when we don't have a lot, we obviously just drink it really mainly. Um, but when we do get into the point where we have excess milk, we love to make cheese. Mozzarella is one of our favorites to make goat milk mozzarella. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Um, we make all different kinds, you know, making the chevre and adding different herbs and stuff to it. Mm -hmm. That's really nice on crackers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I've made, um, the soap one time, <laughs> I, I really intended to make it a lot more times. I actually have a lot of supplies to make more. I just, I just don't know why I haven't. <laughs> so many other things going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think we've really done many other products other than that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to do it all. It is hard to do it. All. It's so you true. It and you know, it's like. And then you add in cows and then you got to So I, I can't wait till we, we get the chance to see if we can milk our cow or not. They're not halter broke at all. Yeah. So, and, and I don't have a stanchion for them, a, a head gate or anything. So mm -hmm. right now I haven't done anything, but if she does give birth, I'm hoping that that's going to be the moment where I can really get hands on with her and, yeah. and get her to the point. I mean, she's not scared of me, but she doesn't want me to pet her. <laughs> yeah. Aww. So I don't know how milk it would go. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. But um, the Piney Woods are a smaller breed. So she is, so I do feel, I think, a little bit more comfortable about attacking that situation at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like once I get her into a head gate, she follows a bucket easy. So once I get her into a head gate, and, and get her to the point where I can safely touch her any way I want to, and she can't do anything about it. <laughs> That's going to be where she's probably going to be like, oh, okay, this is, this is okay. She's got a really mild temperament. So oh, good. I feel like it's going to, I feel like it's going to be a good thing and we'll have that extra milk for the homestead. Yeah, that'll be good. And, 
Yeah, I look forward to being able to make butter. I've made goat's milk butter, but it's definitely a lot more labor intensive to skim off the cream because it doesn't separate easy. Yeah, I bet so. So with the cow milk, it separates real easy and I can make some butter. And then, of course, now that we have pigs, the skim milk will be really beneficial for raising out our pigs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I like the whole circle of the I know. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to someone that came to the store a while ago about that, like, I was talking about how our milk cows are like the queens of the farm. Like they run the farm basically. And they were just kind of like, what do you mean? And so I was explaining the whole process to them about the skim milk and, and we make butter and we, you know, we feed, we feed the other animals with the skim and um, you know, they fertilize things for us and help our garden grow, you know, all that stuff. So it's just like this whole full circle, but um, yeah, it's neat. Yeah. Um, so thank you. This was fun to talk about goats. <laughs> um, and I know our listeners will enjoy learning more from you. And um, so is your YouTube channel, is that the best place for people to kind of follow you? Or where would you suggest they, they see you at online? Yeah, I have um, the YouTube channel is Wholesome Roots. I'm basically Wholesome Roots everywhere. So you can find me on YouTube. Instagram I do a little bit I don't do that that, I don't do a lot of posts on Instagram but I try to occasionally get on there and throw up a few pictures um TikTok I try to do little short videos on TikTok um what was the I have a website wholesomeroots.org okay and Facebook my my two Facebook locations is passionate uh wholesome roots passionate plants facebook page Mm -hmm. and then i have a facebook group which is called wholesome roots farmstead friends okay and that's really where most people interact because you can ask questions in a facebook group Mm -hmm. so it's real easy for people to post their question and but mainly i think i get most of my interaction with people is through private messages on facebook Mm -hmm. i get a lot of requests for help you know like Mm. oh no my goat's down what do I do you know yeah and so I I I, you know anytime day or night I am usually very quick to respond when people have a situation come up and they don't know what to do and they don't have a vet available or a mentor I mentor many 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 individuals (laughs) that way yeah so and I'm always happy to answer questions well that's awesome well I know that is, um, that's a blessing to people because I know just from us, I've tried to, you know, when we've had a problem, especially with the sheet, then I've been researching and then you, like you were talking about, you don't know what source to believe. So you're like reading a little bit of everything and you're just like, but this counters this and you know, you just never know. So it's good to have someone that you can, who has experience and, um, who you, uh, believe will give you a good a good answer based on that that experience so um but uh yeah I'll link all of those places in the description so people can find you but um thank you so much for doing this interview with us this was fun <clears throat> you're welcome thank you for asking me to come on I was yeah. I enjoyed it no problem all right well we will um see you guys next week on the podcast <laughs>